Hello, my name is Robert Ortiz, and thanks for listening to Eyes on the Road, a podcast by Uplift Education, where we serve as a guide to navigating the college and career journey. Welcome back to the Eyes on the Road podcast. It's your co-host here, Camille Ehlers, Director of Corporate Relations and Career Services on the Road to College and Career Team. Hey everyone, Robert Ortiz here, Director of Family Engagement for College and Career. Happy to be back with my co-host, Camille Ehlers, and to be with you all as we welcome Isaiah Sneed to our show today. Isaiah currently is the Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admissions with University of Southern California, aka USC, and we're super excited to, be, to have him on the show and to chat about how uh, the time is now, preparing for college and understanding what your college options are, no matter if you're in the eighth grade, seventh grade, early high school, or you're, you're in your senior year, um, there, are t- there are things to be considering and exploring when uh, deciding which college to go to. Yeah, this has been one of, I know I think I say this often, this is my favorite episode or this is one of my favorite conversations, but when you're in this work, when you do college access work, when you think about career planning, all of it, it just connects so much that it does all become my favorite. And so Isaiah's insight today, um, especially as it relates to the current state and like future planning and just thinking about how things become full circle. I'm really excited for our parents and families and scholars to hear from him and um, get a little bit more insight from that from our partner. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm I'm really looking forward to this as well, Camille, because, you know, when I think about my journey, uh, I had no idea (laughs) in high school and middle school uh, what how to prepare for college or like what the college journey was. Uh, I wish that I had someone telling me and my parents what we needed to be considering or how we needed to be preparing for college. I remember when I took the SAT, I didn't know I was taking the SAT. I was just told to show up to take a test, not knowing what I was taking, but it ended up being the SAT. And so you can imagine I did not do really well on that exam. And it ultimately, you know, uh, hurt me when, when applying for colleges. And so there's so there's so much involved in this process that we really can't talk about it enough. And so um, today we're going to be doing that. And that, I'm super excited to have this conversation. Um, Isaiah, thank you for being on the show today and offering your time. Really excited to have you here. Absolutely, man. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me on. I know we've talked about this a couple of times before. and I'm glad uh, we got to put it together for, for today. I'm really excited to meet you, Isaiah, and get this conversation going, Uh, being a part of the Road to College and Career team and having an expert in this field um, is just one of the those moments where everything comes for full circle for for me and in this work. And so if you could just begin just share a little bit more with us um, for the listeners, I should say, about your background um, and your current role at USC. Sure, sure. And, and I'll say, I, I don't know if I'm quite an, an expert just yet, but definitely um, still learning and, and, and excited about being able to get to do this work. Um, I think my route to get here to, to be in a, a position that I'm in, in in terms of college admission is uh, unique from what I've found, um, just because when I was going through the college process myself, I didn't even know that the job that I have now existed. Um, even when I was on my college campus, I didn't know that this type of thing uh, worked. <laughs> and I, I knew always that I wanted to work in the education realm somehow. Um, and so I was really happy uh, when I was kind of on the, the job you know, process, looking for, for what kind of job I, I wanted to do. I could do something like this, like recruitment, um, and still work in the education field, but doing something that I felt like was more uh, appropriate for the skills that, <laughs> that I had. So. Um, I actually started working in uh, uh, recruitment at Year Up a couple of years ago. Um, and for folks who might not be familiar, it's uh, more of a, a job training program uh, that gives students some uh, college credits along the way. Um, so I did recruitment for them for a couple of years and then ended up discovering that you could do something similar um, for a college, for a four-year institution and worked at my alma mater. Whittier College for a couple of years as well. And I think that's when I really discovered uh, what being an admission counselor really meant. 
um, the recruitment side, but also the evaluation side, and also the support side of helping students answer these kind of questions to help them find the, the institution that's right for them. Um, and then uh, most recently, I was lucky enough to, to start working with USC um, and, and have been really excited about all the things I'm learning. Um, I know we'll probably talk about different institutions, and so it's good to have some experience at different types of places, nonprofits, at smaller private schools, at larger research institutions, and, uh, and, and going back to what I initially said, not an expert yet, but really getting to, to understand fully how best to help students explore all these different options. So I'm happy to be able to, to explore that some more. So Isaiah, I mean, you're, I think you're being humble with uh, saying you're not the expert. You're definitely the expert uh, just with your experience and knowledge and uh, uh, really, really grateful for your time and the conversation that we're going to be having today, uh, which is going to be centering around preparing for college, um, not just for high schoolers, which I think a lot of people may think that naturally of like, oh, well, you know, I don't really maybe have to like think about college till my junior or senior year. But I think, you know, you and I and Camille understand that um, college preparation really takes, really starts way before that, um, or w much sooner than that. Um, especially we think about middle school, seventh and eighth grade being the ideal time to start thinking about preparing for college. Um, so Isaiah, in your experience, as you mentioned at Whittier College at USC, um, and then in just your professional background, you've been part of the college application process uh, as someone who reviews them, um, considers admission for uh, college applicants uh, entering their freshman year. So when it comes to early preparation, so middle school families, maybe high school students at the ninth and 10th grade, what would you encourage them to start doing now um, or maybe be thinking about in preparing for college? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question because, uh, yeah, you're right. It, it starts way earlier than junior year, sometimes even senior year, right? And I think a lot of times we can get blindsided uh, when, we, when we get to senior year, like, whoa, there's <laughs> a lot of things that I wasn't really kind of thinking about. Um, and for me, especially in, in middle school, I think, um, for me, I think it's, it's important to start thinking about First, of course, it's just like, hey, just love school at this point. Learn to really enjoy the process of learning um, and, 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 and the discovery process of, of like new knowledge and stuff, because that's just going to like feed you throughout high school. But it's really important, I think, uh, personally, that you should start asking yourself in seventh and eighth grade, you know, why do I want to go to college? <laughs> Which is like a really simple question, but I feel like you'd be surprised that sometimes, you know, you, you could even be a college a first year student in college and, and not really know the answer of it. You know, like we all know you go to college, right? That's what you're supposed to do. But I think getting to that why is going to really help you propel yourself through those first and second and third years of high school. Um, that can feel like, you know, what am I doing here? Why is it good to get A's for what, <laughs> you know? Um, so of course that answer is going to change throughout middle school and into high school and whatnot. Um, but as it changes, you kind of, you know, get more excited about it because you get a more crystal vision of why you're doing what you're doing. Like going to college is nothing but like a long-term plan, right? And you're able to put those pieces into place, um, you know, early on and, and know why you're putting those pieces into place. It makes a lot of sense but when you start getting to the more granular things uh, in your junior and in your senior year. So uh, that why, that, that helps out a lot. <laughs> Yeah, I really love that you said that. And even as you're saying it, I'm like, oh, yeah. I mean, I don't think I ever heard that, even in my own experience as a middle schooler or just starting out high school, just the concept of to love what I'm learning and, and to be open to new ideas right. and um, adding to what I've known before. And uh, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, it's a complete mind shift mm -hmm. um, and can really help see and something i think about too is like as of course at that age it's hard to see the future like it's hard mm -hmm. to see how what i'm doing now is helping me you know six years from now um but if i'm loving this process it can help paint that picture yeah and, and i think it's important just because i think sometimes um especially earlier on like 
you might just get fixated on a certain college because it's maybe the first school. And a lot of what I say also just comes from my personal experience, <laughs> right? I know for myself, like the first school that I saw when I was in eighth grade, I was like, I'm going there. And that, and that was it, <laughs> you know? And that's great. But I feel like looking back, I kind of cut myself off to a lot of different um, types of institutions and universities and even discovering those because I already felt like I knew. And um, yeah, to your point, it's hard to know as a seventh grader, uh, but, but loving the process. There's a Kobe quote somewhere in there. Loving the process. <laughs> You know. I think you you really just kind of led me into like I've been thinking about a couple of things you said um and just like the why we've it resonates because we've said it before we've say it you know in our conversations with students those of us that work with students um and thinking about college and um where they might apply and I'm thinking about you know how that why looks different for so many especially now you know what um, what that looks like and what that means for them and what loving education looks like in uh, the state of the world. Um, and I wonder, you know, if you, in the last year, um, with all of the changes in your work, in our world, what are some of the ways that you've been able to, or that you've seen, um, like a, a good example of student being able to stay committed to like their why? Mm, mm. That's a good question. And, you know, and I actually think I will see a lot of that in the next couple of weeks um, when we start kind of reading applications and, and whatnot. But I think in general, in this process, a student being able to articulate that is really, really important. Like that always kind of stands out in an application when a student can say, I'm doing this because of this specifically. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I, I never thought about it, like how that might look different this year. <laughs> so it is, it is really kind of exciting to, to think, you know, how, how that might be. But, you know, I, I have not seen anything yet. I have not seen yeah. anything yet. Um, but I imagine... Once we get to the app. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Once we get to the app. Well, another thing you said, um, you mentioned that in your own experience, and it's not, I I am completely my own experience, and I've spoke and taught and met with lots of students over the years, and they, as you mentioned, find a school or find a program, and they're that's it. They're stuck with it because they're familiar with it. It might be in their community or in their hometown or they have a sibling, uh, whatever their reason is. It's it's just the one and they're stuck on it. And so I wanted to um, touch on that a little bit around just like mindset around college being the same at every, no matter where you go, college is the same. But we know that colleges are so different. <laughs> and when you get into it and you hear uh, reflections from your peers and from other professors or whatever your other families, other um, students, it's so different. So can you talk about some of those differences that you either on one hand typically see students consider when they're picking a college? And then on the other hand, what would be some that like for someone that's listening, what would you suggest that they might think about considering? And are those, or are mm -hmm. those two the same? Sure. And and, and, I, and I'll speak of kind of, I guess, about my personal experience and kind of what led me to to a certain place and then how I think that can play out for other students as well. Because, yeah, you know, when I talk to students, I remind them like, listen, there are 4,000 different colleges and universities in the United States, right? You're really trying to whittle it down to, you know, on average, the 10 that a high school senior is going to apply to. So there's a lot of differences, but then there's also a lot of similarities that you might find in them that can speak to something that you like. So there's big things, you know, um, you'll start with, you know, location and different programs, um, private or public. Um, and then, you know, you really have the opportunity to get really, really specific once you whittle those kind of things down. If you say, you know what, like, for me, I was like, I would know I want to go to college in California. Um, I grew up in Seattle originally. And honestly, I hated the weather. 
And I think that is just like such a legitimate reason to say something like, okay, I, I want to go somewhere warm. So now you have, you know, from that 4,000, now you're down to, you know, maybe a couple thousand. And then you say, okay, you know, I, I know that I learn better in a smaller environment. Okay, now you're getting a little bit smaller. And when you start thinking about things in that way, um, you can whittle it all the way down to things like, I know when I leave my college campus, I want to be around a neighborhood. I don't want to be in a city. And I also want to be close to a city if I want to take advantage of what a large city has, right? And then those kind of things, you know, Whittle your, whittle your list down to like, you know, maybe 20 or 30 or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and it helps you really find the place that you're going to do your best learning at. Um, but then also, you know, I, I just want to recognize it takes, you know, sometimes it takes visiting campuses to um, kind of realize those types of things. Um, and I didn't have the opportunity to visit any college campuses in California because I lived in Washington, right? And I, I recognize that a lot of folks will be in similar situations, but there's a lot of small schools in Washington. Um, down the street, there's a smaller school that I could walk around or visit and say, okay, I know maybe not this school, but a small school feels right for me. Um, or I can go to a big school you know, nearby and say, okay, this is feeling too big for me. So I know that, you know, I'm more somewhere between that small school or, or less, right? Um, and take advantage of what's around you to kind of check those, those boxes off um, to figure out, you know, what works best for you in a broader scale. Um, and so that's kind of how I approached it and uh, in, in trying to decide. Um, at the end of it, I knew that I wanted to be at a smaller um, liberal arts um, school that was near a city. And, and although I never stepped foot on my college campus, I was able to figure that out by um, looking at places that were near me that I could get to, um, to help me answer those questions. Because end of the day, it's all about fit, right? <laughs> and I know you folks probably talk a lot about fit in, in your process too. Um, and I like to like describe that as just, or even in like asking those questions, where are you going to do your best work? And, and that's really what it should be. And I think you know, I'm about to go on a little tangent here because I get <laughs> kind of worked up. But I think a lot of times we think about rankings and those types of things. And those are great. But if you're in the best school for engineering, but you don't even feel comfortable to go up to your engineering instructor, then it doesn't matter, right? You, you want to be able to feel like you have that ownership o over your college campus so that you can take as much out of it as you need to, to have a very... Um, fulfilling experience. Um, so, so that fit, you know, and is the most important and asking those questions of where I'm going to feel comfortable, where I'm going to do my best learning will help you get to that school that fits uh, and maybe help you kind of ignore rankings, uh, which I think, you know, sometimes can, can kind of get in the way. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, true. And I think it also helps with what we were talking about earlier with the, your why, you know, maybe just, being able to identify how you learn best and what appeals to you about that learning process as you make your college selection process. Yes. Uh, you're able to kind of identify why that school is perfect for you, whether it is big or small or in a hot city or a cold city that will help you thrive. I think that is um, what I try to do in my work, especially is think about the end goal. You know, what about this decision you make today will help you be successful in four or five years Absolutely. and, and persist, you know? Absolutely. And, and, you know, and it could be things that you feel like, I don't know, don't necessarily feel like important that really can be. So uh, you kind of asked me earlier about some, some whys that I've seen. Um, and, you know, I, there'll be students that say, Hey, you know, I want to study in LA because there's so many different cultures here and, you know, there's so many different types of food and that's something that I've always wanted to experience. And that's so genuine, <laughs> you know, that's just, you know, uh, pinpointing a, a, a part about what the institution is that, you know, isn't necessarily academic, but it contributes to you having a full experience at that, that college or university. So. As you know, as I'm, I'm working with my niece, who's a senior in high school mm -hmm. and you know, there's just a lot of things that go into the college going process that, that can become, become complicated. And so in my conversations with her, 
that was my question. I was like, well, if you had, if you had the opportunity to live out of Texas and move, where would you want to go? And she was like, I just want to live somewhere near the beach. And I'm like, cool. What about California? She's like, I would love that. <laughs> then let's start looking at schools. Yeah, I love it. I love it. <laughs> um, but I, I appreciate you saying that that's a genuine reason to start the exploration um, phase where, where do you want to live? Where do you want to be nearby? And then let that drive your exploration. Absolutely. Cause you know, and to your point, it is legitimate because you're talking about your learning space for the next four years. And we do our best learning when we're the most comfortable, you know, and you just want to be comfortable where you're going to call home uh, for the next four years. And the beach might help, you know, uh, contribute to your, your comfort. <laughs> and that's real, you know? Uh, so yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, on, on the, on this topic, you know, 80% of our students at Uplift are the first in their family to attend college and potentially graduate from college. At Uplift, we provide support and resources to ensure that our scholars have a wide range of exploration opportunities when it comes to their college options. And that includes out of state. Um, so can you speak to what your experience has been with out of state students and what advice would you share with them who may be considering an out-of-state school? I would say, and it can be difficult, right? You're moving, you know, almost across the country. You're in a new place. Um, and it can be a, a little bit scary, right? Um, I can speak personally. Like I said, you know, I moved from Washington to California. Um, and, and it was a transition. And I think there's a couple of things that are important uh, to just keep in mind. I think the first thing that's important to keep in mind is that everyone is going through this transition process. Um, so you're not alone, right? Um, there are folks that are going through this with you. Um, there's resources on campus that uh, are available for you to take advantage of. If, if it, it means, you know, just finding someone to talk about how difficult the time might be. Um, and then the second thing that I think is important to keep in mind is that, uh, you know, college in general is a, learning experience. Um, and if you give yourself the, uh, you know, the opportunity to get through what can be and what is commonly considered like a difficult learning experience, all that's going to do is um, encourage you later on when the next difficult thing comes up, right? And, um, you know, you face it and you're like, man, you know, this is hard. But then you're like, oh, you know what? I remember when it was hard when I moved from Texas all the way to New York or all the way to Washington, or all the way to California to go to college. And it was tough, but I did it. You know, you kind of get to pat yourself on the back in that way and say, Oh, I can do hard things because I've done them before. And it's kind of just like a, um, a domino effect, right? Where you are able and, and more confident in doing these hard things that you might get approached with because um, you've got a little something to, to, to recount where you, where you've did it in the past. And so, um, that's, that's how it happened for me. Right. Um, it was, it was tough. And I remember calling my mom and, and saying, Hey mom, you know, I'm having a hard time. And she said, Hey, you, you know what, you can get through this. And, and when it, when it's over, you'll be able to, to look back on this. And, and that has helped me long-term for, for other hard things that, that, um, I've, I've been, uh, willing to take on. So, um, I think that's a good way to think about the learning experience as a whole. Yeah. And to that point, I'm thinking about, you know, you talk, you're reflecting and I, and I, one of my biggest regrets, um, and I hear it a, a lot of times with my peers is, you know, not taking that risk or not leaving their hometown or not, um, exploring options outside of what was in front of them and not to the, to their fault, right? Sometimes access means is, what is realistic and, uh, and approachable. But um, what I think about now in terms of relocating is the state of the pandemic that, you know, the state of education with the pandemic and, and what relocating truly would mean for a student um, considering potentially like a USC from Texas and how online learning or even a hybrid model learning, you know, rationalizing attending or enrolling or applying to schools outside of their scope, mm -hmm. just not only for safety, but just for the understanding of how the value of my education will look 
uh, from a computer or from a hybrid model? And mm-hmm. and what would you say and what do you say um, to families or students who are to help them stay committed to their education or, you know, thinking about taking those risks under our current like circumstances? Yeah. And that's a, that's a really good question. And I think that, uh, you know, we're, we're thinking about that a lot right now. And I think, uh, you know, this is a temporary situation, although it might not feel like it. Right. I know sometimes I'm like, man, when is this going to end? Right. But it will, it will end. And, um, at the end of your four years at whatever institution that you attend, um, your degree is not going to say was online one year or whatever, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Um, it, it, yeah, I think it would be, um, how would I say this? I encourage folks to stick with their plans, um, and not let something derail them that could affect that long-term plan, right? If there's somewhere that, you know, you're, you're interested in going and you know, this is the right institution for you long-term, you know, stick with it. And, and this little kind of detour that we're going through right now, I don't want that to affect year three when, you know, maybe you're trying to get back to, you know, what that initial plan was, but things could look, right, what we know now, things could look completely different. Um, I think it's just kind of having uh, assurance that, whatever institution is right for you is going to be right for you for the long term. Um, and that this is just a temporary situation. Um, uh, and that at the end of those four years, your degree is going to look exactly the same as, as it would, if not for um, what we're going through right now. So, you know, I say all that to, to say, I totally understand. Right. And, and I think it's something that families and students have to think about for themselves um, in terms of what is the right option for them. Um, but, you know, again, I, I personally think it, it's great to stick the course, right, and 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 make that decision and go forward with it, knowing that, um, you know, we won't be in this situation forever. I, I wanted to touch on briefly, just um, um, although it's a pandemic and it, it might be online right now and it might be boring and the modules might be confusing. Um, and just the importance of not looking at it as a waste of time. You know, it's an investment, whether it's um, even just some of our own work, right? We're, we're remote, we're not building connections, we're not doing the work in the field that we're used to doing, but we're staying committed because we know when this is all said and done, um, we have to stay committed and, and invested in that work. So what I wanted to talk about and ask you really quickly is thinking about that value as it relates to the career aspect of college and how you, yes, you're getting your education. Yes, you're enrolling and taking courses and getting a degree, but also the goal is right to get a job and to prepare for your future and um, to feel, uh, you know, contribute to society and contribute to your community and invest and take care of your family and travel or whatever your motivation is. Can you tell us what you all do in, in your in your work or what advice you might have um, for students on how to navigate like career planning resources while they are in college? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm glad you said that, too, because I think um, that leads back to that why. Right. A lot of times when folks start thinking about life after college, it just, you know, helps them figure out what that why is uh, all over again. But, um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, career services, I think this is one of the things that uh, is most often going to look similar on most college campuses. Um, But, and this is like the most admission uh, counselor answer ever, but like also very different. (laughs) And it's one of the things that I encourage folks to um, really do their research on when they're looking at um, whatever college or university that they're interested in. Um, I always say when it, when it comes to like career planning and career services, th- all of the resources are there on campus. It really starts with you just walking through the door and saying, hey, this is what I want to do. Help me out. 
and they'll be so happy to do so. Um, and again, that leads back to that fit and feeling comfortable on your college campus to, to go into that room, uh, make an appointment and, and just talk with, with the, you know, the, the person that's going to be able to help you get where you're trying to go. Um, and that just leads to more opportunities, right? So in, in, from what I've seen, uh, most often students are connected with, uh, you know, different internships and career uh, opportunities through the career services uh, departments, um, but also through things like having relationships with teachers and professors um, that, uh, uh, you know, are looking out for you in that same way at big universities and small universities alike. Um, I've seen students get, um, you know, internships through alum, uh, through, uh, you know, just networking uh, with people that come to campus and are, are looking specifically um, to help out the students that are there currently. Um, you know, uh, I've seen folks uh, work on campus, uh, do on campus jobs and then get hired at universities directly after graduating. I just think there's a lot of different ways to advance your career, um, but they all really kind of start with students um, taking advantage of what resources are available to them on campus and then also feeling comfortable to, um, you know, walk up to people and say, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. How can you help me? Um, so I, I think that second part is a really important piece because most folks that you find on a college campus are, are going to be there because they want to help you. Um, and I think understanding that and knowing that there are all resources available for you to get that help, um, it's going to lead to some, some, some doors that you might not have considered uh, even prior. Let me tell you, I was so mad at myself when I learned it was literally like the last two weeks of graduating with my bachelor's degree, that there was a career services center <laughs> that on my <laughs> campus where they would have looked at my resume, my cover letter, they would have helped me find internships and jobs mm -hmm. for free this entire time. You <laughs> like, and me both. Yep. And you know what? It's in my, I, I worked in corporate relations and career services and college students who use their career services, earning potential at a minimum is entry level $10,000 a year more or more and oftentimes more. So just by even using them and, and pushing them to say, no, you're going to find me a job because after all of my investment and my time and my advocating for this school, and that's what they're there for. And they're happy to do it. This is not something that they they love doing it. And so, I, I mean, if you take nothing away from this call and you're if you're a student or you're going to be, please find some time to locate your career services department or college or whatnot or use uplifts. We have our own now. Like how many high schools have that? So you have your earning potential automatically is higher because of that. So that's my two cents. So Isaiah, right now at our last question, and I just want to hand it over back to you. Um, you know, what would you say to a student who is interested uh, in exploring a little bit more about USC? Um, you know, maybe depending, regardless of what grade level they're in, uh, what would be some first good steps uh, for them to start finding information or um, maybe getting connected with somebody to see, you know, if this is a school that, you know, should be part of their top 10 list or school to consider in the, in the application process. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think um, one of the cool things about right now, if, if, if there's anything, right, one of the cool things is that a lot of the information that is made available uh, virtually um, is information that would have cost a, a plane ticket in earlier years, right? Um, I think one of the, the best things to do first is to do, you know, little things just like check our website out, follow us on Instagram. Um, we do a lot of student takeovers. We do a lot of student stories and, and a lot of good um, information that lets you know just, you know, who we are and kind of how we want you to think of, of us as an institution. Um, and then you'll be able to take advantage of those virtual sessions we have weekly uh, information sessions. We have weekly student panels, weekly academic information sessions. Um, these are all offered via Zoom, virtual tours. And this is just like stuff that you can learn on your own time, comfort of your home, um, and get a better idea of, uh, of, of, of who 
we are as an institution. Um, and then you'll kind of have some questions and, and some things you're more curious about. And I think that's when it would be great to reach out to your admission counselor. We have uh, a huge team of admission counselors. We make our process very personable. Um, so there's an admission counselor for your specific high school. Um, you can type in your zip code and they will get that information for who your admission counselor is to you. Uh, we actually have uh, for our seniors out there, personal uh, website pages that have upcoming events that have all these virtual resources, phone number, information for your admission counselor, all of that. We want to make it as easy as I believe it should be. Um, and I think that's kind of like a, a great course of action of, of learning more um, and then getting directly uh, in contact with someone to ask those specific questions. Um, and we're all here to help, right? We're all here to, like I said, just make sure that, um, and I think we do a pretty good job at that. So um, I would encourage everyone to learn more find out more, use the resources available, and uh, we hope to hear hear from you. Nice. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, and then we always ask this with every guest, um, you know, is there any last thoughts or comments that you would like to share uh, before, before we go? I would say that I, I think uh, the college process is it's one of the first decisions that I feel like students get to make, uh, you know, really uh, for themselves. Um, so have fun with it, enjoy it, enjoy the process, uh, do your research, submit your applications, and then close your laptop and enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your couple of weeks. We'll get back to you. Um, and, and then you'll get on for the next steps or whatever that journey is for you uh, when you hear back from, from us as, uh, as colleges and universities. But I'll double down on having the time to close your laptop and take a deep breath and double down on uh, enjoying the process because I think it should be a fun process. Hey, thanks for listening to today's show. You may find the information we discussed on the description page of this episode. If you have a question or would like more information about what we discussed, please email us at rtcc at uplifteducation.org. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Eyes on the Road podcast wherever you listen so that you don't miss our next episode. And until then, be well and shine through.